Good afternoon and thanks for joining us for Living Local, your lifestyle show for all things Charleston and beyond. I'm Ashley Mazurvi. It's Medical Monday at East Cooper Medical Center, and today we're sitting down with a colorectal surgeon to see how advances in technology have made a positive impact on both the patient and the physician. Medical Monday, sponsored by East Cooper Medical Center. Joining us today, we have Dr. Susan Kanaka. She's a colorectal surgeon here at East Cooper Medical Center. Thanks for being with us today. Thank you for having me. Well, let's talk about robotic surgery. I'm telling you, I hear more and more about it, especially here at East Cooper. How does that, how do, how do you play into the whole robotic surgery? Yeah, so um, robotic surgery is becoming more and more prevalent in all specialties of surgery, from urologic surgery to general surgery to colorectal surgery. Mm -hmm. um, and um, the way the robot, robot helps us um, is help us do more complex operations through smaller incisions with greater dexterity or ability to uh, move our instruments um, and with greater pre precision. Um, patients think, oh, is the robot going to do the operation or are you going to do yeah. the operation? It's not artificial intelligence. Okay. It does not know how to do the operation. It's not going to turn on you. No, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> um, it's basically a way to dock a bunch of instruments on a patient um, and then I get to sit at a console and control that uh, those instruments with really fine um, movements uh, and be able to work in lots of areas of the abdomen um, with through tiny incisions. Okay, so like if you're dealing with colorectal cancer, mm -hmm. like so I was just so, thinking about, are you always going through the abdomen? Uh, yes, you're okay. going through the abdomen. Um, Although we do, we are developing ways to go through some um, other areas, either through the stomach or through people's bottoms and things. I was to wondering try. that. I just that's, didn't want to. You that's know, that's very like, much in development. Okay. That's not so something that's, that's standardized yet. Okay, that's gotcha. future. But right now, we are going through little poke holes or little mm -hmm. incisions in the belly, um, and the uh, robot then uh, is is docked or mm -hmm. placed at the patient. We we sit at a console. We control the instruments and do the dissection. Take that segment of the colon out. Um, and put the patient back together all with the robot. Mm -hmm. um, take that portion and send it to pathology and undock the robot and the patient wakes up and goes goes to the hospital actually. Yeah, so it's days. minimally, it's less invasive than before, right? That's right. In the Historically, in the past, it was a very large like, incision yeah. across your whole middle of your abdomen to be able to mobilize that whole bowel and remove it and then put you back together. Are you still able to see as much though? Because I think that if you slice someone open, you would be able to get in there and see, you know, yeah, instead um, of. That used to be true, um, particularly with early laparoscopic technology, but now with the robot, we really can see probably better than you can in an open situation. Really? We have these beautiful cameras with really good zoom. Um, we can get into tiny spaces, zoom in there, and get our instruments right into a small space um, without disrupting a lot of tissue around us. So is it changing like the success rate when it comes to like, you know? No, um, in that sense, from a survival standpoint, mm -hmm. from a quality of curing you from colon cancer or rectal cancer, it's equal. It's okay. not necessarily better, although um, I think for surgeon it might be better. It might, it's easier on us to do the operation without destroying our back over the course of mm -hmm. um, how know, long a does it take? Well, how long? These are long operations, yeah. maybe four to five hours wow. sometimes. Um, but also, there's so many other advantages to robotic surgery. Um, we ha some, often have to give less fluid in the operating mm -hmm. room, uh, less narcotic in the operating room, also less fluid and narcotic after surgery. Mm -hmm. Patients are getting up and walking um, and uh, getting out of the hospital faster. So, does it also impact? So if, let's say they have cancer and do you do the surgery first and maybe like the fact that they're, they have less downtime means that if they have chemo or something else That's after exactly that right. might That's actually exactly not right. be as hard on, I mean not saying it wouldn't be as yeah. hard. But. Well, that, that's true um, in that there's a shorter time to recovery mm -hmm. and so you can usually start chemotherapy faster. Mm -hmm. And the beauty of that is that we, we have more and more data that says the sooner that you get chemo started after surgery, the better the survival long term. And so we do think that that's mm -hmm. better to have smaller incisions, get patients to heal from those incisions faster, and then get them to chemo if they end up needing it. Uh, let's talk about just screening, just make sure to tell the folks at home the importance of colon you know, screening and, and things right. like that, being mindful of family history. And right, um, yeah, so everyone has some risk factors, um, uh, family history, uh, particularly if you have a genetic syndrome, there are some things like FAP, 
H and P C C. These are sort of um, complex letters and words mm -hmm. for um, genetic syndromes that predispose you to colon cancer or rectal cancer. Um, then there's also things like obesity, race. African Americans have a little bit higher uh, mm -hmm. risk for colon cancer and rectal cancer. Um, inflammatory bowel disease mm -hmm. like Crohn's or ulcerative colitis puts you at risk. But even if you have no risk factors, 80 to 90 percent of colon cancers are sporadic, which means you're the first person in your family to get it. Mm -hmm. Nope, your aunt, your uncle, your mom, dad, grandparents, no one had colon cancer and you're the first one. And so because of that, patients really need to have their colon cancer screening with a colonoscopy um, starting at age 50 or sooner mm -hmm. um, if you're African American or if you have a family history. Or you're having some Or some, if you're having symptoms, some issues, absolutely. Uh, there on. are some young 30, 35 year olds mm -hmm. who have new bleeding from their bottom or something. They That ain't normal. Colon Something, yeah. <laughs> that's, that's not right. something you want to just ignore, right? right? All right, so anything else as far as robotic surgery? Not everyone's a candidate for that. No, as, as not well. everyone, but the majority are. Mm -hmm. um, some folks, if they've had a lot of other abdominal surgery and have big incisions and a lot of scar tissue, we might not be able to put the robot mm -hmm. uh, uh, to do the operation. But um, most robotic surgeons will try robotically unless there's mm -hmm. something really blaring that says we shouldn't do it. Um, otherwise, we would try and see. As far as being a surgeon, is this like, you? do you like doing robotic surgery? Oh, for surgery? sure. Um, it's uh, great for the patient um, and uh, honestly easier on the, on the surgeon, I think, in terms of the ergonomics of being able to sit and operate. Gotcha. All right. Yeah. Well, thanks again for being here. Thank you. And for more information, head online to eastcoopermedctr.com.